Hey and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to make these rock shapes in designer right here in an extremely easy way. Uh, this is for beginners and intermediates. You barely need any notes to get the bass going and well that's pretty much all we're going to need. As you can see right here we don't need much. Uh, we go over all these notes and then make a couple of examples you'll be seeing over here. So to get started we have our generators, noises, then we head over to shapes and then we over head over to hide with a little bonus to soften the edges. So to start off with, you pretty much need two things, which is the tile random or the tile sampler, whichever you prefer, to be honest. All you need to do is make small shapes like this right here or the ones over here. You don't want to worry about making shapes like this yet. That's what we're going to do next. Just make sure you have nice shapes like these to get started with. Just play around in the settings and you'll get some interesting results. So the first note I want to go over is the distance note. As you can see right here when we plug the inputs in, the following will happen. So to understand the distance notes and why I need these small shapes is it basically baffles the shapes but it never flows over into another shape as you can see right here. So you get something like this and when we set it to a really high input, we get solid gray surfaces we can use we can work with. So as you can see right here, we have three examples. We are using the tile sampler, tile random and the tile sampler again to make these distance notes right here. This one is used for the material right here. This distance note is used for the small cobblestone bricks and this one right here for the rough rocks. So we bring in edge detect node and the name does as it says. Pretty much it draws an edge on, well, the edges right here and with the options right here we can adjust the roundness and the width of the edges but in some situations we want is some deformation to make the edge detect node or the edges of the rock look a bit more natural so we want to bring in a directional warp and a crystal one node so let's create some space right here let's hook this one up right here and as you can see you get some harder edges from the crystals right here so from there we can just play with the intensity just set it to your liking and then bring it into the edge detect node just for those wondering how i dock these notes what you want to do is click on your node hit d and there you go your note is now docked all right so now it's time for the best part what we want to do now is we want to create some height in our notes we want to get the flood fill to do that just hit space and type in flood and take out the first note fill there we go then we want to start hooking up the edge detects like this. All right, there we go, all sorted. And then we want to use the following node, which is the flood fill to gradient. Just to make sure you're using the right one, you have flood fill to gradient, but it can be confused with grayscale or random grayscale. So let's click that one, head over here and just plug this one in and there you go. So as you can see, there are a couple of techniques you can utilize with the flood fill to gradient. First of all, you have the settings right over here. And my favorite one is being the angle variation. As you can see right here, if we plug this in, we can see the angles changing. So now they all follow the same direction, but if we set it to variation, they all follow uh, their own directions. So the best thing with the angle variation is if we use multiple ones of them, we can actually start sculpting the rocks. As you can see right here, if we blend two together with a min darken, we can slowly start sculpting some nice details right here. Let me just plug them in so you can see them live right here. As you can see, we got these shapes now. We blend a couple more together. Another layer and another layer. And slowly you get some nice rock shapes that go from this to this. So one reason I waited with the level and bevel node is the following right here. As you can see, there are quite some big gaps right here and we don't really want that. So that's a way to combat that. What you want to do is get a bevel node in and a levels node. Let's make some way right here. So with the bevel node, basically what it says is bevels your mesh. So what you like to do, it's quite sensitive as you can see. So just set to 0.01 or 0.05, something like that. Let's get in our levels node, hook up our height. And from there on, we can adjust this slider to create the following result. You can use smoothing to make it even better and close the gaps while having a nice smooth bevel right there. So now when we plug this in, 
as you can see, our edges are a lot closer to one another while not losing any results. I've also added them right here. One thing you want to watch out for, however, is for example, when you select the float fill node, double click it and then select the levels node to adjust the parameters right there. As you can see, if we put the edges too close together, the float fill node will not work. It needs a solid black line for it to work. So to show another level of controlling value in your rocks, we can utilize the gradient map right here. So what you can do, for example, as you can see, we've got some nice shapes going there, but if you want to be a bit sharper, just drag this line right here. And as you can see, the edges will get a lot steeper and sharper. Just play around with them until you have a result you're happy with. One thing you can do, of course, as well, is get more black value in there. So just to show you the difference, this is the default one right here. And when we add more black value, we get a lot of sharper edges like this. So one last thing, just to show you how to solve these edges right here, we can use a non-uniform blur grayscale together with the histogram scan and an invert grayscale. So what you want to do is you want to hook your node invert grayscale up to your blend node like this to get the following results. Then use a histogram grayscale. What will happen is everything that's white will get blurred. Everything that's black won't get blurred. So if we use these maps together, we can actually, as you can see right here, give our edges a nice little blur. You can crank it up quite a bit. You can crank it down, whatever you desire. But as you can see, there is quite a bit of a difference between this and this. Also, just so you know, with some nodes, it's not even needed to create a custom mask. What you can do as well for this one on the top, for example, is just hook them in like this, crank up the samples and blades a little bit, lower the intensity, and there you go. So just to show you how it looks with and without, this is without, and if we crank it up a little bit, as you can see, it will get a lot smoother. I would just say, let's say 0.8. And there we go. That should do it. Maybe 1.2. Yeah, that's already a lot better. And yeah, there you go. And there you have it. Just with these four categories, these nodes, we were able to create three kinds of rocks because they are generators, our noises, our shapes, and our heights. Even though we didn't use our clouds and put in noise, this is up to you. I just prefer these two noises for rock creation. Just play around with them with a slow blur or a directional warp so just to go over on the three examples we've made from these couple of notes is we have made some cobblestone slates we've made some cobblestone stones and some rough rocks like this one right here so just to recap and go over it one more time we started with our generators right here the tile sampler the tile random and the tile sampler again then we headed to our edge detect and shape so we use a distance node a directional warp if desired with a crystal one for some extra hooky shapes and then an edge detect to extract the edges then if desired we use some value adjustments so we use a bevel node to bevel our shapes and use a level node to bring them closer together again then we added over to flood fill and our sculpting segment so use flood fill to get these grand random gradients going right here and we used a blend to start sculpting our rocks and then if desired we could use additional value so as you can see with gradient maps we can create harsher looking rocks like the ones right here and if desired in the end to soften the edges we can use an inferred grayscale histogram scan and a blur grayscale with a non-uniform burst grayscale to blur out these edges right here to soften them a little bit. And from there we have three results. I would like to thank you for watching. Make sure to check out our Instagram, TikTok and all the other social posts down in the description. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial.